Greetings lords and ladies, and welcome to the Westeros vibe, where snows are deep, but the winter snows are deeper. Our first news story of the week is... Game of Thrones production update, leaked photos from Money Glass set, Sophie Turner seen near Winterfell set. Pictures have surfaced of a set apparently being built in Money Glass, where Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa, has been spotted. It is speculated that the set is of Winterfell, which points to either Sansa or Theon's capture by the Boltons, or retaking of the castle by some northern bannerman loyal to the Starks, or it may just be another castle in the north entirely. In other news, Game of Thrones Season 6 casts Max von Sydow in major role. The highly praised actor will play the three-eyed crow, Brendan Rivers, Bran Stark's new teacher in all things Old Gods, so expect a lot of dialogue discussing Bran's newfound abilities, hopefully combined with some insights into the show's backstory, as Brendan is over a century old and is, and is a Targaryen bastard. He also was a brilliant spy back in the day. Moving on, we have Game of Thrones Season 6. Is Jon Snow alive? Kit Harington seen him filming the location that could hint at his future. After being observed in Belfast near the main filming location, Kit has been spotted in Spain in the company of Natalie Emmanuel, who plays the scribe and translator Missandre. This has, of course, led to further speculation that Jon Snow is alive and that his story might take him to a sunny place like Dorne, Marine, or even King King's Landing. Although in the books, winter has come at this point in, of the story. A further tantalizing piece of information, which might confirm Jon's return to the show, is his exclusion from the Honor the Fallen, the Memorial Collection merchandising line. In other news, who is Ian McShane playing in Game of Thrones? Here are our 5 best guesses. Ever since it has been announced that Ian McShane is to join the cast of Thousands for Game of Thrones, people have, have speculated about what character he could play. The leading guesses are Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning, who will possibly appear in a flashback according to a tantalizing casting call, Lord Randall Tarly, Sam's father, an icy man disappointed in his porker of a son. Euron Greyjoy, a younger brother of King Balon Greyjoy, who has sailed around the world and gathered an army of dodgy followers and has dabbled in the dark arts. The Elder Brother, a character who is part of Brienne's storyline in the books, whose appearance might lead to the return of a presumed dead character. Lord Howland Reed is the only survivor of the Tower of Joy besides Ned, and may have some theories to confirm. Even though it is a long shot, anything is possible. Through the process of elimination, I believe that the most likely candidate is Tarly. McShane doesn't have the Valyrian look, and is older than he should be to play Dane. It would be a waste of a swordsman for him to play the elder brother. Howland is supposed to be a Cranach man, agile, short and grave with a spear. And as for Euron, there are better choices. Randall Tarly may be the best role for McShane to play next season. Moving on, we have Game of Thrones Season 6 production update. Full-size ship reportedly being built on set. A full-size ship along with a castle are apparently being built for Season 6, which has led to speculation that the Greyjoys will play an important role within it. As all book readers know, the Iron Islands start to play a huge part in the story during the fourth book, with far-reaching consequences. I will not spoil the plot, but let's just say that all eyes should be focused on Euron Crow's eye. In other news, Walder Frey is coming back to Game of Thrones. Yes, everybody's favorite octogenarian turned mass murderer and oathbreaker is returning to the show, although he didn't say in which season so expect more plotting and more possible king slaying. Our next story is... Game of Thrones Season 6 Sand Snakes and Hodor will be back. We knew for some time that Hodor will make his long-awaited comeback, alongside Mira Reed and Bran, and we suspected that following the obvious success of the Sand Snakes after the introduction last season, they will come back for more of the same. You do know what they say about Sand Snakes, 
they're coarse and rough and irritating, and they get everywhere. Moving on to book news. The Winds of Winter release update. Will the sixth book really drop this year? The only relevant piece of content from this article is a quote from George's live journal blog, dubbed confusingly not a blog. And while I will be traveling, my, my army of minions will be here at the old homestead, toiling in the paper mines. This suggests that either the book is done and it's in the editing process, or that portions of the book that are done are in the process of proofreading and editing to speed things along. Whatever the case, it is unlikely that the book will be released this, this year, as editing requires a few months of hard and attentive work. The last news story of the week is a fun one. Seven hints George R. Martin gave that Cersei Lannister will die because things aren't, aren't looking good for her. One hint for each one of the seven gods of the faith. Here they are. The Walk of Shame. It heralds the end of Cersei's power in the eyes of King's Landing as every beggar and whore has seen her privates. Cersei's children plus the Valonqar. The prophecy states that Cersei will outlive her children and then be killed by her Valonqar, or little brother. As Jaime is slightly younger than her, then this leaves us with two candidates for who he could be. Danny plus Marjorie. The prophecy also states that someone younger and more beautiful will tear her down and take her place, and here are two perfectly good candidates. I would also add Sansa Stark to the mix, but whatever. Jamie's thoughts. In A Feast for Crows, Jamie starts really hating his sister for betraying his love, and because she is starting to remind him of the Mad King. This is also strong foreshadowing of the Valonqar part of the prophecy. Martin's huge twist. It may have something to do with Cersei, however the subject is still wide open for interpretation and speculation. Moving on to the lands of YouTube, we find Emergency Awesome who released two videos this week regarding Game of Thrones, a Q&A and a video about Ares II aka the Mad King. Preston Jacobs has also released two videos this week, the fifth part of his The Minds of Wolves and Robin series in which he, he touches upon Robert Aaron's dreams, and what they could mean, and the What You Are Missing for Season 1, Episode 9, Baylor, in which he explains to show watchers what they are missing by not reading the books. Lastly, on the official Game of Thrones channel, they have finally posted a full Comic Con 2015 panel discussion. But that is the news for the week ending on August 9th. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please like, share, comment and subscribe, and stay tuned, goodbye.